Hey, it's Bob Nagan, and in this episode of Real Retail TV, I'm going to share how to make your promotions 10 times more profitable. So the first thing that I want to talk about, because I know some of you are going, promotions, Bob, how can you be talking about promotions when we are in the middle of a pandemic? The pandemic is not over yet. And I absolutely understand that. But what I'm encouraging you to recognize is the uh, a promotion does not have to necessarily be about driving people into the store. We've been talking about omni-experiential retail for a while. And all of the promotions that used to be strictly in the store can now be omni-experiential. You can add a social selling dynamic to your promotions. You can promote it on your website. You can sell via e-commerce. You can do clienteling with them. So I really want to get you out of the mindset that promotions have to be in store only. But I also want you to recognize that this pandemic is going to end and there is tremendous pent up demand in that when if you are ready, if you do know how to do promotions and you're ready for the release, the pent up demand, the money, the emotional, the people who want to shop local, you're going to be so much better prepared for the future, for the post-pandemic future when it arrives. Here's a disclaimer. I told you that I will share how to make your promotions 10 times more profitable, and I will. But I want you to recognize that it won't happen overnight, that the things you're going to learn will be compounded, that you're going to do them again and again and again, and your skills are going to grow. So while you may not be able to 10 times a promotion right now, with what you'll learn, you will absolutely be able to 10 times your entire promotional calendar over the course of time. So the first thing that I want to share with you is this idea that not all promotions have a store-wide discount associated with them. And I know some of you know this, but I didn't for a long time. I would have a promotion, and if I had any promotions at all, I would always have 20% off store-wide with that promotion. Why? I was afraid. I was afraid if I had a promotion and didn't put the store-wide discount with it, nobody would come. And it was just totally untrue. I had a great relationship with our customers. Uh, our store had a great buzz. People loved us and loved what we did. We didn't have to have a store-wide discount associated with all of our promotions. It was merely fear. And here's a side effect of that. What we learned was we had been training our customers to wait for the discount because we loved promotions. It was part of our marketing DNA to do fun stuff. We had lots of them. So people just waited us out. They knew there was another promotion coming down the pike sometime soon, so they would just wait to save the money. So don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. So let's talk about the different types of promotions. Because when we talk about making your promotions more profitable, understanding that there are five different types of promotions, and by mixing up your promotions, you make your promotions more interesting, more effective, and more profitable. I'm only going to spend a second with, or I'm just going to sort of list them here, but if you want to know more about the five types of promotions, I, I'm assuming you're watching this 
here on our website, but if not, go to WhizBang Training and in the search bar, type five types of promotions and you'll get to an episode of Real Retail TV where I give it a more thorough treatment. But here are the five types. The five types of promotions are number one, sales. And a sale is that event where you have a store-wide discount. But again, not all promotions are sales, and but all sales are promotions, but not all promotions are sales. The second kind of promotion is a special. And a special is a promotion that's designed to drive traffic. Typically you have one item or perhaps a category or a vendor that's at a deep discount and that deep discount drives people into the store. And then of course you're trying to sell them more goods than just the goods they came in to buy at a deep discount. The 12 days of Christmas is a perfect example of a special. The third type of promotion is an offsite. And if you do a pop-up store, or uh, let's say you're a garden center and you go to the spring gardening show, or if you're a quilt store, you go to the quilt festival. These are all examples of offsite promotions. And then there's value-added promotions. And value-added promotions don't focus on selling anything at all. They're just there to add value to the relationship with your current customers. A customer appreciation event is a perfect example of a value added promotion. And finally, we have cause marketing, whiz bang, cause marketing events. And cause marketing events are when you partner with a local nonprofit, a cause, and you do things to help them raise money. Uh, the last episode of Real Retail TV, which was titled, What to Do with Those Pesky Donation Requests, is a, a, a treatment, an in-depth treatment of whiz -bang cause marketing. So do you see what I'm saying? So when you understand there's five different types of promotions and you mix them up strategically, you have different ones on different places in your calendar, all of a sudden your promotions are more interesting, you're gonna get more people participating, and they will become more profitable. Variety is the spice of life. So the next part of this, how do you make your promotions 10 times more profitable equation, is to make sure that you start every planning, every promotion with a purpose. Get clear about what you're trying to do. You know, the late great Zig Ziglar talked about the difference between vague generalities and meaningful specifics. When you get clear on what you're trying to do with each of the promotions that you do, you're going to make them significantly tighter, more focused, and more profitable. Let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, one purpose could be to get new customers. I want to build my customer base. Doing a cause marketing event is a perfect way to get new customers. But you see, when you say this is what we're trying to do, it drives your promotion. Another one is, do you want to build relationships? Sometimes it's time to build relationships. A customer appreciation event would be a perfect promotion to whose purpose is to build relationship. It could be to add energy. Uh, my old friend, Bill Oshi, uh, who used to own the Kite Loft stores in Ocean City, Maryland, the king of the wind. Well, Bill was this larger than life personality. And whenever he would feel the energy drop, whether, whether it was in his kite flying community or in his staff, He'd have a party, right? He was like, he loved to have parties, but the purpose was to get the energy going again. So do you see, there's a purpose, and then what he did followed that purpose. Is it to drive traffic? If the purpose of your promotion is to drive traffic, well, good, now you know it. A special is a great example of that. I talked about the 12 Days of Christmas promotion. 
Or finally, sometimes, a couple times a year, the purpose of your promotion should be to clear out the old inventory and generate cash to bring in new inventory. That is a sale. But do you see, by getting clear what you're trying to do, all of a sudden you can give it the focus in the strategies that it deserves and your promotions are gonna be a lot more effective. Uh, but then, after you've understood, after you've determined what the uh, purpose of your promotion is, now it's time to plan it correctly. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you should have a format that you use every time. So the same questions get asked every single time so that you become a more effective planner. I know so many people who just throw stuff against the wall whenever they do a promotion. Oh yeah, let's try this, let's do that. Let's get in some refreshments. Let's get in a clown, let's bring in an elephant. No, 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 no. Be thoughtful, be deliberate. So whether, you know, ask yourself questions like, am I going to need extra people on the floor? Am I going to need extra people in the store if I'm doing social selling? What kind of notifications do I need to put on my website? What is going to be the email strategy to drive people to whatever the promotion is? But when you create a format, create a Word doc, and go through the process, in the same order every single time, you are going to become a better planner just through the repetition. Now, if you have the Retail Mastery System, and you do have the Retail Mastery System, right? If you have the Retail Mastery System, you can go to your marketing module and there is a promotions planner right there. You don't have to figure out the for a format. All you have to do is print up the form and go through it step by step. And you will have a well-planned out promotion. So now that you've planned it, now you have your promotion and hopefully it's a big success. But this is, here's some real magic folks. This is something that it took me years and years to learn, but is really, it's kind of the secret sauce for promotion planning. And it's this. Immediately after your promotion has finished, that same day, you and your team, before you go home, even though you may be exhausted, you sit down, you have a glass of wine, if you drink wine, or you, you know, break out the Coca-Colas, and you sit down and you say, what worked, what didn't, what should we do next year? What should we not do next year? I learned this at the Mackinac, I mean, at the uh, Grand Haven Kite Festival, the Great Lakes Kite Festival. You see, we, every year for several years, about Saturday afternoon, it was a three-day event, Saturday afternoon we'd go, oh, we forgot that thing again, right? And so every year we were making the same mistakes. And then we started to do what I'm sharing with you now. We uh, formatted the planning, but then we did the recap meeting, that, that secret sauce. And so now I was the announcer and I was up on scaffold, right? I was 10 feet up in the air on Sunday afternoon. The event la uh, ended at three o'clock and I'd you know, give everybody the, thanks for being here. We're gonna do it again next year. See you next year, yada, yada, yada. You know, the old <laughs> end of the event, thanks for being here speech. I crawl off, crawl down from uh, the scaffold and me and my brother, Steve, all of our key volunteers, Susan, we'd all go, we had a command trailer. We'd all go into the command trailer, march straight into the command trailer, and we had this recap meeting. What worked, what didn't, what do we need to do next year? And it was amazing. When we started those recap meetings, the increase of the quality of the experience of the event just went way, way, way up. And I'm looking at you and telling you that you don't wait till the next day. Don't wait to, till your next team meeting. Do it immediately. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be in depth, 
but you want to capture those ideas right away. We call this the perpetual improvement process, PIP. You see what you're doing? You're starting with a purpose, you're planning it out, you're doing it, and then you're recapping it. So every single time you do this event, it's going to be, you're learning something, and it's going to be better next time. Perpetual improvement process, which leads us to the next tip, the next way that the next thing that's going to contribute to your 10 times profitability. And it's something called a marketing book. And so the marketing book is a three ring binder and that's where you put your promotions planner. That's where you put your recap. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, if you have the retail mastery system, there is a recap form in your marketing module. That's where you put all of the, you know, a printed copy of all the emails that you sent. Something about the social media marketing that you did. If you did any other advertising, what needs to happen? So all of those things go in that book, in your marketing book. And why is this so powerful? It's so powerful, powerful because next year when it's time to do this same promotion again, and by the way, if you have a successful promotion, you should do it year after year after year after year. You don't have to start from scratch. That's what we were doing with the Great Lakes Kite Festival. We were basically starting from scratch every year. When we did what I'm sharing with you here, Promote Purpose, Promotions Planner, Promotions Recap, Into the Marketing Book. All we did was we opened up the marketing book and we already had our plan. Do you see how much more efficient that is? Do you see how much work we saved ourselves? And this is how you make it better every single year. So the final thing that I want to share with you, and this is Everything I've shared with you so far will make all of your promotions so much better, whether you're doing them online, social selling, uh, in store, a blend, omni experiential. The real secret to really getting that big growth is to stay with it. You know, the first time we did the Great, Great Lakes Kite Festival, back then it was the Great Lakes Stunt Kite Championships. There were 30 people on the beach. It was me and Steve and two or three volunteers and a, a handful of hard hardcore stunt kite flyers. Well, fast forward 15 years uh, and all of a sudden it wasn't 30 participants and no spectators. It was hundreds of participants and 50,000 spectators. That event would uh, draw 50,000 people every single year. I mean, you waited for hours to get into the state park. We put up a giant tent that we built. A, we built the world's largest kite shop in this tent every year. And when I look at the accumulated benefits of the Great Lakes Stunt Kite Champion, Championships, evolving into the Great Lakes Kite Festival, for the Mackinac Kite Company, that event had literally millions of dollars worth of benefits. If you look at the new customers at Mack Kite, the Mackinac Kite Company has been renamed to Mack Kite. The new customers that Mack Kite acquired and their lifetime value, the publicity that that event uh, generated, the buzz that it generated, you know, almost immeasurable benefit for that, you know, for, for Mac Kite. And I share that with you because I think sometimes we become impatient. We want to hit a home run right away. And I'm looking at you and sit, telling you, if your gut tells you that a promotion is a great idea, apply what I've learned right now. You know, make sure that you uh, figure out what kind of event it is, figure out the purpose. Usually if you figure out the purpose, the kind of event follows, make sure that you plan it correctly, make sure there's a recap. 
and then do it again next year, year after year after year. That is how you build a promotions calendar that will make you enormous amounts of money. So one thing that I want to share with you right now, the Retail Marketing Club, the price is going up very, very soon. And if you like the idea of having great, great, great promotions, the Retail Marketing Club will be a tremendous investment in your knowledge, in your skills, in your ideas, in your sales. So the Retail Marketing Club, every month we have a meeting where we talk about, I will share an idea for a great promotion. You will have the opportunity to get into a Zoom room and brainstorm with your fellow retailers. There will, there's going to be lots, lots, lots more, but it really focuses on building out a great promotional calendar. So if you haven't, if you're not a member of the Retail Marketing Club yet, I'd encourage you to join right now because the price is going up. All right, so I hope to see you in the Retail Marketing Club. And if I don't see you in the Retail Marketing Club, I hope to see you here next week.